My name is Tyree Simon, news writer for SC Scoops, and welcome to the Get to Know series. This has been a long time coming. I've been looking forward to interviewing these guys for a while. Um, let's give you a little history lesson. Back in October 26, 2000, 2021, I interviewed these gentlemen, uh, and we were just, we both were actually getting started talking about wrestling and wrestling media. Uh, and, you know, the this Get to Know series would not have been possible without interviewing these guys first. These guys were the start of everything, without even, even being official. Um, I had the honor of speaking with three gentlemen that I would say are one of the best podcasts and one of the best presence in wrestling media um, that we've had. Uh, the central point of the wrestling community, I would think. And um, they just so happened to not only thrive in those, those year and a half, but also they've also had expanded and now we have another podcast on the network as well all the keeks ladies and gentlemen keeks graham benjamin cj the public enemies podcast brand oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Gang, gang gang what's up what's this has been a long time coming man i'm, I'm so glad to finally got to get all you guys in the room Okay. Happy to be here. I am very happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Definitely, super thankful. I Definitely, you, bro. Definitely. Um, it's crazy. It's crazy how much like time has changed, right? So, like I said, we did the interview in like 2021, and you guys were just really just making waves and in, in, in the business and, um, you know, I mind my, my myself. I didn't even really even start. We, really with SC Scoops going, going to the Get to Know series and stuff like that. And it wasn't until we actually met, talked on you know camera and actually did this interview, the first one, that this whole thing popped off. We were the yeah. genesis. <laughs> we were the genesis. Oh. <laughs> Congratulations to you, Brez. It's definitely been a pleasure uh, watching, you know, and seeing from afar the brand grow and just, you know, the different experiences that you've been able to pull from people. And uh, it's been dope to see. So salute to you. Definitely, definitely. And, um, you know, it's crazy because, like, we never – this the first interview we ever did, it's not even on SE Scoops. So it's, yeah. not, it's, it's not even an official official. So this will be the first interview that we've done that will be on SE Scoops where – um, definitely uh, more people will be able to, to view it as well. And it's, it'll, it'll be an official uh, get-to-know interview, mm -hmm. um, which I'm, I'm very happy to, to be able to get back to this. Um, anybody want to know? So before we start, I would like to, to kind of talk about just what you guys have been um, doing, right? Um, Graham, you've gone on to, you know, now being a producer – and, uh, you know, you have this, the Public Enemies podcast, you have the Black Sheep podcast, your producer for All League Keeks, we're going to talk about soon. Um, you know, I'm very proud of you, what you've done uh, and, and the work you've, you've put into this game. Um, CJ, I've, mm. I've, I've, I've just looking at where you were in 2020, 2021 to now, I feel like you've, you've grown in confidence and you're legit a veteran at this game. Yeah, I'm trying. <laughs> you know? That's dope. Yes, sir. I've, I've seen you with all, all. I've seen you with Keith the other the other show, um, and just the just the maturation that you've done in this game, where it is you could you could be put in any spot, and I feel like you will shine. So um, I, I just just looking at your evolution has been great. And then Benjamin, you have another kid coming. <laughs> you have another kid coming another on the way, one, bro. Another one. I think the last time we did it, I had one coming too. So. I guess, like, yo, <laughs> this matches up. Get off of her. <laughs> what are you doing? You know it. <laughs> Go to I'm bed. To professional, relax. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but not only that, you know, I've seen as you as well. Like when you first were, were, were when we first did the interview, and just how I felt like you were still fresh to it, and like now you've matured in this, and now I'm seeing you do interviews also in this game. And you, you're right. confident in that. And, and and just looking at how you've become not only a great content creator, but also a great family man, it has been a, a great to see. So I just wanted to start off by giving you guys flowers first before we actually get into the full interview. 
Yo, oh, I really man. appreciate that, bro. Especially, you know, the compliments on all that. And I for the for the podcast portion, I, I remember at the beginning, I sucked. Like, you know, nobody <laughs> had to tell me. I listened back to that. I was like, yo, I'm coming in at the wrong times, cutting people off, like not finishing my sentences properly. I mean, I still suck, but it's just like a little less. So <laughs> appreciate you. <laughs> so you all ride on horses, all right? That's right. So um you know, for the people that, that may not be aware, um, I want to just give a quick, uh, just a, about you guys, just how you got started. How did the Public Enemies podcast start? Uh, it all started in Brownstone in Brooklyn. You know what I'm saying? Just me and the guys getting together on weekends, drinking Hennessy, you know, and we was like, we could just turn this into a whole, po- I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> no, that, <laughs> the Henny Palooza story. Uh, but no, <laughs> but no, uh, this started uh, just between a group of friends that just wanted to uh, shoot the shit, talk some wrestling uh, in a more so like barbershop type setting, uh, just kind of joking back and forth with the homies rather than, Hearing these same talking points from middle-aged white men. Yeah, mm-hmm. so uh, that's pretty much how it started. Yeah, that was about it. Yeah. yeah I think <laughs> oh, I said you want more than that? <laughs> oh, oh, no, don't worry, baby. Don't, don't, don't no, worry, baby. I, I, got a, I, got, I got us, baby. I got us. Okay, go ahead. It was a long, long time coming. My man, Graham, hit me. Like I said, I think last time I said, like, he hit me in my darkest. I think I was at my darkest point in my life. And he was like, yo... You want to talk about wrestling? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and, and yeah, man. I just thought, I was, I'm just going to come here and just start talking. And I uh, didn't know that there was a whole little little thing to it. But yeah, I just, I, like, I tell him, I tell Graham every day, like, you, know, you, you saved me. So uh, this podcast means a lot more to me than everything. That's why I take it so seriously. That's why I'm so sensitive about it. Because it really, it really took me out of a dark place, and he really helped me out. So, so yeah, man. to put a bow on it, it started with me, Jizzle, and uh, another host transitioned. Uh, got Benjamin. Ben came in, turned it up. You feel me? Then turned around. You feel me? Like a year and a half later, Keeks came and turned it up. You feel me? We was at nine. She said, "Nigga, thirteen. You know what I'm saying? So that's where we at right now with it. You feel me? <laughs> yeah, saved us. <laughs> And, saved us and it's, it's crazy to, to, to think about like go, go, i go back to the 2021 interview and like you guys were still trying to like i said you still got to figure out still trying to figure out like okay what else we're we gonna do we're gonna, are we gonna go back to interviews again are we gonna do uh patreon stuff like that and like i said within a year a year and a half you guys have like did everything you you wanted you said in that interview you wanted to do and then some so i'm, I'm incredibly proud of you guys um which again, you know, you you wanted in that interview you said you wanted to make a brand and make a network, and that kind of leads to Keeks. Uh, how did you guys get to? How did you guys know Keeks? Because I, I met Keeks last year. Uh, I got in his inbox and I had, uh, said, "Hey, I got an idea. Um, why don't y'all have an AEW content show on y'all shit?" And why not? That's basically what happened. I shot my shot. Oh, it was, you stop him. <laughs> it yeah, was I shot literally. my shot. That's what. That's what I mean. <laughs> like, was we did we did a WrestleMania recap? Uh, I think the year before, mm. if I'm not mistaken, the, the whatever the year uh, was after they came back. Yeah, you feel me? Like she came on and she did that. And we just kind of all kind of kept in touch and kept in contact. She did the show maybe once or twice uh, since then, like after that, you feel me? And then like, it just was like a natural progression. You know what I'm saying? Like once she once she threw it out there, it was like, yeah, why don't we have just like an AEW, you feel me, type straight show? And right. then like, why don't we have like a woman, you feel me, like on the show, you feel me, right. like on our show or just, you feel me, like with her own ism, you feel me? And she kind of had like, the idea to do both at one time, and we was like, "Why not?" Efficient. Two birds with one stone, if you may. Yeah. And and, and it's 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 crazy to think about. Like I said, we, this was something that you you talked about uh, for a while, and to finally see it happen, um, to add Keeks onto the podcast network. Um, Keeks, just look, going back to you, like 
What on your history of wrestling? When did you start getting into wrestling? I got into wrestling um, because my mom is a wrestling fan. Um, my mom was the the biggest Von Eric fan there was, so she was looking at wrestling. Then I started looking at wrestling, and then you got to understand I'm in Texas, so wrestling and football goes hand in hand. Mm. So, and you know we home with a sportatorium, so that's how that came about. So it started with my mama, and then I just started from there. I was like five. Oh. Like, and- <laughs> Crazy at five years old, student get into wrestling and just to this day. Um, and and what's interesting about your podcast is that, like I said, it is about all elite wrestling. Uh, can you explain what what decision to make of to just do all elite wrestling and not like WWE, which a lot of most podcasts do? Um, because I'm a fan of AEW, um, I am still uh, I still do watch WWE because I'm a I'm fans of different wrestlers of WWE, but AEW reminds me of WCW Cruiserweight Division because I'm a big fan of the Cruiserweight Division. I love the Cruiserweight Division. That's why I like Ruthless Aggression era so much, too. So they remind me of that. So And plus, I watched WCW more at the time before I just solely started watching WWE. So it made sense. And And... You know, one of the things that I was proud of these guys and and to put together is to have a a, a female on the network, especially a black female. Um, when I feel like in this space, <clears throat> I feel like we don't get enough, a lot more. I feel like that the ratio is a lot more men than the women in this in this media space, especially independent uh, content creators. Uh, just just going back to you guys for a second. Um, what has it been like to have Keeks a part of this whole network for you guys? <sighs> just... Be honest. Go. I don't know who I'll wanted go. to go. I'll I'll I, go. Could, I, I, I could just take the rock and you feel me? Like Keeks has been amazing, first and foremost. You feel me? Like <clears throat> it's important to have uh females with uh and i don't say females and like a direct women you feel me it's just plainly you feel me in um in these spaces with a voice that are just unapologetically them you feel me like you can't like I, I i would feel like we would be wrong to be like yo let's bring keeks on and then be like but Keeks, you can't do this. Keeks, you can't say that. Right. Keeks, you can't do it. Like, no, 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 no. Like, if, if if we are going to accept her, you feel me? We want to take her as she is. And her, with as, as she is, she's amazing. She's crazy. She's great. You know what I'm saying? Like, she's super creative. And she's very diligent with her work, very honest with her work, and very passionate about her work. And I want to work with people like that. So it's been a blessing to have her on this platform. And, you know, comes with an extra, you know, couple clicks and views, too. You know what I'm saying? So, like, it's beneficial. Hey. <laughs> if, she, if, if she, We were talking about uh, getting a woman on the, um, on, on, on the isms. And then Keeks is exactly what I envisioned. <laughs> like, there's nobody that embodies this more than us us four. Like it's like it's, it's just like it's seamless. It was so seamless when she came on. And I'm just like, yeah, yeah, this gonna work. Well, it's like, gonna work. Well, and not to not only to like to mention it's just like I I think I it's, I don't even know if I said it before, but I was like she embodies like we, as like time goes on, we try to like to make it like a move to like be more kind of um clean up a sort of the way that we do sort of things and i was like damn i hate this so i was like i like this. <laughs> when, when no one was looking and i could say whatever i want and now i'm like grandma's like hey bro you need to chill on that so i feel like she embodies like a lot of the spirit of the show and like uh, you know everything that we got we got to live up to the name dog you feel yeah. me yeah. <laughs> it ain't public enemies for no reason <laughs> bro it's it's crazy that you said that because like as going through and, and watching some of the videos and from like over the old videos you did to like now you guys are a little bit tamer than than, than like what we what was a year a year and a half ago when we did the interview like you guys are a little tamed out now and i feel like keeks does bring a little bit more energy to the podcast network than what has you know obviously you guys are great but i feel like he's giving up a lot more he's saying we we got soft y'all <laughs> <laughs> 
said we need a kick to restore the feeling. I was about to ask. I was like, same. <laughs> <laughs> same. You know, but it, but you know what it is? I think part of it is and Keeks, I've we've met. We've met uh we met last year at the um it was it was like this all black uh wrestling convention uh, mm-hmm. in New York, which was great. Um and I met you there for the first time. I didn't know didn't know much about you other than you, I know you just started out with with these guys. Mm-hmm. And like your personality was so strong and some of the stuff that you said to us New Yorkers then Especially with chopped cheese and how you call it a spread and and, and it is. It's not. But it's it's okay. the show a spread though. It's, like, it's not. You... <laughs> it's not. I, I, it's not. But <laughs> but um like when meeting you, I've like I've gotten to know you and, and know that you're one of the most kindest, strong will strong minded uh people in this space. Thank you. Like, not females, just people in this space. Um, and I felt like your inclusion into this brand is, is very necessary. Thank you. I, I I really don't know what to say right now. I didn't, I appreciate all the kind words, but I'm glad you said that. <laughs> I am kind. I just, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm just a bull. I'm just a longhorn. I'm, you know. She's you genuine. You gonna yes. You're not going to see me coming from the back. You're going to see me. You know what I'm saying? You She's know? genuine. <laughs> it's not it's not about oh the approach it's about like it's about what's the meaning behind it mm-hmm. what am i trying to say to you what is, what is the message that i'm trying to convey to you and i think some people get that misconstrued yeah yeah she's our okay and okay and <laughs> that, that, that's what it is we need we need one of them and she and this is her and she knows that her show is her show <laughs> You ain't, you ain't gonna be coming up like listen, man. I came up on her joint one time, like the first couple episodes. She was like, Yo, get out. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I was like, I was like, Yeah, she's gonna be great, y'all. She's gonna be great. I think Keeks is, is important to the space. And one of the questions I have for you, Keeks, is you know, as a female in this space, as a black woman in this space, I feel like men, men, everybody gets criticism, but I feel like it comes a lot more as a female. I feel like a lot of people don't will won't let as much criticism of things slide, uh, especially if you being strong minded as you are. Uh, how do you deal with just that aspect of it? Uh, try not to take it personal. You don't take it personal. You take it as face value and just keep it pushing. Um, I had to actually work on that because I was at a point taking it personal, but I had to work on that. So once I just you know got the advice from different people like doc uh cal different like just take it in one ear and not the other people gonna say what they want to say just keep doing you and things like that so i don't take it personal because they gonna say it online but when they see me it's always either hugs or they looking down or they avoid coming my way no. uh, smiles on hallmark cards <laughs> was it ever a thing for you like that made you hesitant again in this space you know, because because obviously, you are somebody that's strong minded. I, I don't think that things get to you as much. Maybe back then, it maybe, but I felt like that's something you have to think about coming into this space a little bit more. Yeah, that's true. Um, I wasn't at first because I didn't know all of the extraness at first. I just came in heads on, and then when it started happening, I'm like, oh, shit, y'all like anime, uh. Twitter and the rest of you. I was like, oh, okay, so whatever. That's it. sucks, man. And I'm real protective, you know what I'm saying? So when people are trying to come after, you know, I just want to come out there and just be, I just want to jump on and, and just start shooting at people. It's like, man, who, who, who think you talking to? But then I, then I realized, I'm like, man, Kings don't need me to come over there and do nothing. Nah, bro, she her own shooter, bro. Yeah, she her own shooter. <laughs> that is a thing, though, right? Because, like, like I said, criticism comes a lot more, and it's a lot, maybe a lot harsher, um, than 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 what I means for for you guys. Like, how you guys ever had to like me step out and, and say something on behalf of somebody else or, or, or a fan or whatever? Um, yeah. Oh no, we did, we we didn't bang on a couple people, but you know, it's it's, uh, it's, it's, rare, it's rare when people try to get out their face and say something about us. Hmm. Like you, you'll get the occasion. It's like the same thing that Keek said. I still suffer from the same thing. But I, I am sensitive, 
and I don't take I don't take criticism about this well, especially when we come from a good place. So if anybody would say something, I would try to hop in. And then Graham had to tell me, like, yo, man, and not everything warrants a response. I'm like, you know what? Yeah. You're right. Yeah, that's that's something that I had to kind of learn, too. I mean, there, there are select um, times when I've just been like, yo, I'm when it's been like a bigger name who's tried to hop on and try to say something and try to like – to out of like out of nowhere like they're not even in the conversation the conversation is not over on their side they just like walk over at that point i'm like yo the gloves is off because i feel like in that type of situation when you're a bigger name and you trying to take someone down who's in the same space with you i'm like that warrants a response now these trolls running around on here saying stuff in their replies. I let I let that slide because our notifications nine times uh, like out of ten, like they're tailored, so that stuff doesn't like come through. But when it's like someone like of notoriety trying to like come and like step to us, I'm like I take it kind of personal. <laughs> I'm I'm the vanity searcher. <laughs> Yeah, yeah <laughs> I'm the vanity. Name. You know what are people on? saying about us? <laughs> <laughs> never anything positive. Well, it, yeah, I think that it's, it, there's some stuff positive, but more than not, I'm like seeing up there like people doing screenshots and like that they blocked us and be like enough. And then um, you'll see people be like, oh yeah, those guys, and they'll like do this thing where if you search it up, you can't see it to like put a star on one of the letters. And I'm like, bro, I still know my name, even if you put a star in front of it, bro, I'm not mm. dumb. And be like, oh, well, well, those guys are always like this. So they're always doing extra. Like, uh, I remember when we started doing like uh long-term booking stuff. Oh just, my God. It was, just, it was just a joke. Just a joke. It's an offhanded thing that was said. And uh, I'm not even gonna say the guy's name. because I don't want to give no, no, like nothing to him, but, I, after that, we like I said, "Hey, let's let let's turn this into something. Let's like make this into something out of spite. Like, yo, spite yeah. motivates you know people <laughs> like us. Like, yeah. yo, I'm gonna I'm gonna make something out of this out of spite. And like I said, we've been carrying that around since then. It's like, yo, you try to you try to like hold that off the top of my head. Nah, I'm gonna use that. Yeah. So blame yeah, cuz. Yeah, yeah, dude, yeah, dude, yeah. The dude from NY got put in the dirt for that. <laughs> so, so um, yeah, it was it was crazy. And then we just we just took it and turned it into like, okay, fine, we're just gonna okay. You don't like what we say? That was gonna say it for everything now. <laughs> can I squash? Can we, can we squash? Can we squash that on? Can we squash it on here? I got that. He's good. You know what I'm saying? No, he, what, he, was, he, no, he ain't saying nothing. Oh, <laughs> yeah, we into it till you uh, die. Bro. That's right. <laughs> no, there's, there's just there's just nothing to squash. There's just nothing to squash. I, I, I don't know because you was talking like you know something, like you did something, like you was going to do something, like you was about something. And no, there's nothing to squash. It's, it's like, so bro, and like it's so and not for nothing. I've never been run off by Alexa Bliss fans. So like that's one that's one thing I got over my head uh, uh, bro, and got. I never had no Alexa Bliss fan talk to me kind of crazy and be like, man, I'll pull up on your house. Go ahead, bro. <laughs> Please do. I was trying I to wish. Sorry. You know, every now and every now and then you guys remind everybody that it's still the public enemy. He's <laughs> still the public enemy's podcast. Um, like, I, I, th I thought we'd try to maybe find some common little peaceful uh, people be talking out. in it, and like people, can't people be getting people in this space, sometimes. yeah. People are weird, so they get in this space and they act like you're not a real person, like yo, they, they could just say any type of thing to you and you're not gonna say nothing back, and they just talk to you kind of crazy. It's like, bro, like we in the same place, you're not gonna talk to me like that, you're not gonna do any of that, like I would at the I end would, of the day, uh, bro. I'm still like, bro, at the end of the day, I'm still 6'2. I still got hands, bro. Like, <laughs> <laughs> big action. <laughs> like, bro. I would just like to normalize staying away from people with weird energies, uh, people that you think are possibly just not good people. And then mm -hmm. you won't be surprised when, oh my God, they're actually not good people. It's enough room for everybody to eat. I don't, it's not a, and I'll be all person, this person, only this person, only this person. I don't like why we're the only ones that do that, but I don't know, but it's enough for everybody to eat. So 
I agree. With I mean, weird. That's the that's the again, it's weird. That's the weird part about it is I felt like this is a growing like community and a growing business wrestling podcasting, especially independent wrestling podcasts where we're seeing people you know get deals and and you know uh, you know work and collaborate with other big organizations and, and businesses. Um, and I just feel like there is more room for everybody. Like what you guys do has nothing has doesn't do what the other person does. Like everybody has their own way of doing it, their own style. I don't understand why sometimes what you guys say in your opinion should not reflect on what other people think or should think about. Because when you're not secure in yourself, you do things like that. You have to be secure in yourself. That's the problem. It's a lot of insecure people doing things. So it warrants into that. Yeah. I'm I'm not gonna lie, there have been some times where I'll be looking at somebody and I'm like, yo, man, they got more views than us, or like something else popping off more than what we doing. But then I try, but then after that, I kind of you know push that to the side. I'm like, well, we're doing our thing, they're doing our thing. Like, if you looking at somebody else while you're trying to run a race, you're gonna trip over your own foot and gonna bust your shit on the floor, man. <laughs> That's why I like I'm more I'm wearing like Right now, in these situations, I'm wearing blinders. I'm like, how can we get to the next level? How can we get more views to, like, whatever that person's doing? How can we, you know, move up in these places? And thankfully, you know, there have been, like, situations where people have been put into, like, our our field who have been helping us, like, raise our standards and, like, raise ourselves, like, to where a point where we can get these deals, get these interviews and stuff like that. Shout out to KP. Mm -hmm. (laughs) <laughs> gay, gay. He don't like his name being mentioned. <laughs> oh shit! Oh dang! Oh, bro, edit that out. Like, put a bleep over that. You could, put, you could put a bleep over that. I didn't even know, bro. I just like... yeah, yeah. Shout out to Chris Porzingis. You feel me? Yeah. Let me do right here. <laughs> My bad. You know who you are. <laughs> You know, we, you, we're going on like two weeks now. You guys have been on break as of this, yeah. as of this recording, we're recording on uh, May twentieth. It's two weeks yeah. now, right? Yeah. How has that been yeah. like for you guys? Oh man, <laughs> great. <laughs> <laughs> Talk great. to him. <laughs> listen, 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 listen. I'm getting my sleep schedule back, like regulated. Things are great in that department. Me and my bed have gotten real acquainted over the last couple of weeks. That's exciting. Uh, I'd say that I feel like I've been, when I I have tuned in to to wrestling in, in this break, I feel less of a, less of a pressure to analyze or, you know, critique so I can have and form an opinion. I've just been enjoying the shows, you know, and that's something that I feel like uh, has been missing from my approach for some time, uh, because for me, uh, with producing for this show, uh, producing for the Sheep Show, producing for Keeks, and, you know, we got Patreon in between, and I don't know, I like women, (laughs) so, uh, you know, (laughs) I got a daughter, so, like, my free time has been, you know, stretched kind of thin. So for for these last two weeks, I've been just completely detached from any, like, responsibility, and I've been enjoying the hell out of it. And the ice cream truck is coming by, so I'm sure my daughter's going to want something. So. Ice cream! <laughs> ice cream! Ice cream! <laughs> You can't afford it. You can't afford it. Yo, Ben, how's it been for you? Because you you have a you have a a door coming coming soon, right? Yeah, yeah. So like, it's definitely been like, like because we do the show. They're on the West Coast. I'm on the East Coast. So we start the show at ten, and like we normally wrap up around midnight. So, like what Graham said, I like to sleep, bro. Like <laughs> sleeping, sleeping is the most fun thing that I can think about doing as an adult. Like I'm like, I have been, I've been enjoying the little break that we had. Obviously, you know, I, when I see stuff like going down, like, I'm like, oh man, we could have talked about that. But I'm like, just, you know, enjoy the break while you got it. And I'm like, I'm enjoying myself. So, I mean, like. CJ, what about you? 
I hate it. <laughs> nah. I don't think you're not taking a break because you're with Keeks. Yeah, I'm upset. That's why. I, that's why I, I want to do. So I just want to do something. You know what I mean? Like this is. I always I always took this Wednesday as therapy. You know what I'm saying? So I, I need to get out and talk. So I'm glad that she that she let that uh, Keeks allow me to come over in and, and and rock out with her for the last uh, last couple of weeks. Because like even, like it just I feel like when I get over here and do this, I mean I just get my get all my 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 uh, get all my everything out. You know what I'm saying? I can just kind of release and relax a little bit. But yeah, man, Wednesdays, man, I just get to watch. Like I actually get to watch Dynamite. <laughs> before you know I me, mean? so that that's awesome. Um, but the only thing that's come out of this is uh, me watching the Warriors lose um, in live time. Usually, I get to um, usually I get to be on here and then come and watch it. So I'm like, oh, okay. You know what I'm saying at least I didn't get to watch, it. but now I have to sit there and then watch them get stomped in the ground. You know what I'm saying live, so that's cool. But I think I right called. Right. Call, I think I called Warriors in the sixty too. I think I said Warriors. Yeah. I mean Lakers and six. Sorry, Lakers and six. No, you you you, you oh. definitely said Lakers and six, and I was like, never. And then, <laughs> and then you was right. <laughs> But yeah, no. it's good to take a break though and take a breath. You know what I mean? Just get yeah. like a sit back and watch and watch everybody else. And it's, it's good to make people miss you too. So I think that's why I'm that's what I most enjoyed about it. Listen, listen. Last Sunday, I woke up. I did a wake and bake. I I, I sat in my drawers and I watched the menu. And then after that, watch the game. No, no, no. What I do? No, I watched the game and took myself to go see Guardians. I was like, what? Just me. Just me. <laughs> I was like, damn, I'm out here. <laughs> Graham was touching grass. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this right here. Smelling the air. It's, like, <sighs> it's, it's crazy for me because it's like I know Graham. Like, I, I've gotten a, I've gotten the pleasure of knowing knowing Graham a little bit behind the scenes. And I know that this is a guy that doesn't want to take a break at all. Mm-hmm. And so his detriment, he doesn't want to take a break. Um, and so, like, to see you smile and actually happy about taking this break, I, you know, that's one of the things about podcasting and doing content, being a content creator that, that's interesting to me. It's like, there is no day off, it feels like. You know, you'll, you'll almost got to force yourself to take a break. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah it's not just coming up in here talking either. <clears throat> People didn't even just coming up in here and just talking with you. For, like, it's right. not, it's not always that, you know what I mean? Like, it, like, it doesn't. Right. Like I, this man Graham is the hardest working man in show business to me. I, I wish I can give him a James Brown cape. Like he, <laughs> he, he like he's just like I'm seeing. Like he, he works like, and he's still so he's like he's the, he's the coach. You know what I'm saying? He, he's he's great Popovich, the black version. Uh, Bill Belichick, <laughs> the black version. <laughs> you know, what I mean? he's he's the he's even still. You know what I mean? Even when he's supposed to take a break, he's still giving saying he's still. I always need that kick in the butt. You know what I mean? Like people like me need that, you know what I mean, and that's what I appreciate him about the most. And like, there's nobody that deserves this break more than the more than Graham. Like, period. Mm. He's the oh, Moxley God. around here. Yeah, the every Moxley. time you think we're done, no he think we done, coming back. You know, like, PTO time just like just skyrocketing, bro. Like, hey, like, and you know what? <laughs> you know what? If it wasn't for if it wasn't for like like the offshoot like the side conversations that I've had with people like Ty, you, thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, KP, thank you. You feel me? Even though I shouldn't see Chris yeah. Persingas, you feel me? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Shout out Persingas, you feel me? I, that's, that's, man, I love watching your highlight tape, bro. It inspired me. You know what I'm saying? But no, like those conversations that I've had with you guys, just like, it's just like, because my whole thing is always about consistency, 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 consistency. If there's an audience, we have to be there for them. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, Y'all have kind of like made me realize in the, the collective conversations with, especially with Keeks, like, yo, I'm taking three weeks. And no, 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 actually, looking at my calendar, you're taking da da da. This is when you'll come back. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I I need those 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 types of conversations because those are like motivating to me, and at the same time, also like allowing me to realize that we kind of have built up a little bit of a, a, enough cachet to say, all right, we can take a three, four week break. You know what I'm saying? Give y'all a couple of little bonus episodes that y'all might not know about type thing. And then come back refreshed, re-energized, recharged, and just, you know what I'm saying? Revitalized, ready to go. And that's, that's kind of like, that's kind of like what I feel like that we're in the space of right now. And I couldn't be more thankful for the grace uh, that people have provided, and also the advice throughout that all. So, thank you. And, and you know, 
for real. I was gonna say, you know, Keeks, um, you know, getting back to you, uh, we're almost coming to a year since you started your, your podcast venture. Yeah. Um, like, what has that been like just running, com- you know, consistently like these guys have? And, and you know, now you're now you're about to go on your 50th ep- episode soon. Mm hmm. Uh, yeah, it's been a, a, a wild ride because um, I, I take my breaks. Um, I let him know. I'm like, look, um, I'm going somewhere. I won't be here. <laughs> Uh, I'm going on vacation. I won't be, so I'll be back the following. But it's been a ride. Um, I do appreciate the the fan base that I have gained and also the connections or the people outside of it that I have gained that are AEW fans, especially Black people that are AEW fans because we know at one point you was looked at as Uncle Tom for even liking AEW or whatever. So, <laughs> which was whatever. But um, I... I love it. And then, plus, everybody's been with the journey. You know, like, this year, y'all know I lost my sister and everything else. And I even did a show that the next week with that, you know, and it's just, this has been everything to me. Like, it's made me, when I have a bad day at work, I look forward to doing the show that Monday. Like, you know what, work was booked. But I'm a laugh on my show. I'm not even gonna take work to my show. That's one thing that I do. I, you know, this show is like my outlet to have fun and to be myself and to laugh and to to smile and things like that. Hold on, let me because my daughter's singing loud. Hold on. That's good. Listen, I've I've had the the lawnmower guy go yeah, through my whole entire yard. It's so good. She was about to she yeah, was about so to start because I heard her because she was getting loud. <laughs> she about to start. <laughs> We was about to hit the love. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I've I've been enjoying it, and I really appreciate them for bringing me along. And um, I've all, I was already fans of them before I even joined. Uh, because like I said, Public Enemies is like the bridge between Black Wrestling Twitter and also Wrestling Twitter. Like Seth Rollins, them made it to Black Twitter because something that they got from Public Enemies. <laughs> And we and it, it's a breath of fresh air, and I appreciate them for letting me on, and and I shout them out, and I give them so much love, and I don't play about them. So, yeah. You supposed to be here, you gang. No, for real. Like we're like the Fuji's minus the um, you know, the the, the, yeah. the extra shit. <laughs> yeah, the extra this. <laughs> What's the five by eight y'all informants? Allegedly. <laughs> Sprinkle that in there. Allegedly, 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 allegedly. But you, but you know what? Like kicks for, for me, like going back and watching your your first ever show, um, and just like where you are today. Like just watching your first show, you could tell that you're a little, you know, a little nervous about it. You know, you're getting into the space and you're trying to figure things out. Um, uh, shout out to Drip as well. Uh, and like just the maturation of what you've gone from the first episode to like where you are now, you're confident, you're more confident than before. Uh, you, I feel like you have a guest, but I feel like you carry your own as well on a show. Um, like you've, you've risen and become in, you know, a short term, like a year, uh, you've become somebody that is a, becoming a strong staple in this wrestling community. Uh, I appreciate that. Um, I usually, cause I always listen to my shows. I don't know if I listen to my episodes and I kind of just like, how can I do better than the last one? Or what do I need to do and try to adjust? That's basically what I do. I do because I, I'm used to that when I was in college. So I just kind of, let me re remember what I said, because you know, people love to, well, when you was on your episode, you said this and this and this, because nobody gonna tell me what I said. I know what I said, so I always be like, let me make sure I said what I said before I tweet this. Right. I don't need nobody calling me a hypocrite. So I'm just, you know. But thank you. I really do appreciate the kind words. And also, if I, if I could say, you shouted out Drip, I want to say a, a big salute to Drip and Banks without drip and yeah. banks, like I would not have been able to be sane. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Me, myself, with, with the workload, like yeah. they have helped me immensely 
and I'm super grateful and super appreciative of those guys uh, yeah. for what they've contributed to to the All Elite with Keek show because it's it's paramount and and yeah. I'm super grateful for. It. Yeah, bro. right. Sometimes, yeah, we look. Graham is busy. We need. I don't care what you're doing. Get, <laughs> <laughs> I fuss at him. I fuss at drips. But yes, we we get it yeah. done. But definitely those two. Yes, Banks yes. definitely Yo. came in through the clutch mm. too. Banks will hit you up and be like, yo, he hit me up. He was like, hey, you got a show on the Patreon. You ain't did no episodes in a while. And I was kind of guilty <laughs> of that. I was like, yeah, you right. Damn, I was like, ain't nobody. I thought the nobody noticed that. He was like, yo, <laughs> you want to record something? I was like, I guess. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's like, he's definitely, he's definitely six man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the good kind. Yeah. <laughs> The good kind of six men, not, 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 like, not like Jordan Poole or something. Oh my like, gosh. Like, 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 just, just, <laughs> yeah, Banks gives like, hey, yo, you good? Like, Banks would just hit you, just, just say, yo, you good? And then you just make sure you good. You know what I mean? Like, that's that's the important stuff about yeah. stuff like just like, yo, know I mean, like, you good? Like, I think that's what we all have with just like, you good? Just making sure you good, man. Anytime you want to talk, just holler at me. But you know, you need to be, know you need to be doing that thing, right? I'm like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right. We're wrong on two weeks now. Uh, do you have a day when you may come back and do the show again? Who we say when Moxley when Moxley take the break, we'll, we'll, we'll come back and uh, oh tag out. <laughs> we'll tag out, yeah, we'll tag yeah. out. You feel what I'm saying? Hey, hey, right. check this out. When when uh, when Roman Reigns come back as a full time performer, uh, that's when the Public Enemies <laughs> podcast <laughs> will return. <laughs> Uh no, not really. Uh we I, I think we were shooting for the the end of the month or like early June, but like I don't know, bro. Like I'm kind of like feeling like um enjoying this too much. You know, say hey, patreon.com slash August, public enemies. Okay. They said August. They said Listen, August. If if you wanna if you wanna tap in patreon.com slash public enemies, beat me there, don't meet me there. You feel me? <laughs> hey, 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 I listen, listen, I planned for like a month. CJ decided I'm not taking a break and I'm trying to help my brother out. You feel me? I'm like, yo, bro, like we was taking a break. Like, okay, so after after our little month, you feel me? You want to extend it for maybe another week or two, you feel me? And like you can chill. He like, nah. Let's get it. <laughs> it's lit, oh, it's, like, it's lit, baby. Like, you know, like I'm ready. I'm ready when y'all is, but until then, like CJ, when like when all when like when pie when everything is like we're all set up, <laughs> CJ's gonna be talking about like, yo, man, I remember these young podcasts be taking off time. I remember when I was on the floor, we did 48 <laughs> minutes in the game. We didn't take no breaks. Talking about Talk old head NBA players. Like, yeah. man, I remember one night I played all four quarters. I ain't sit on the bench once. I'm like, come on, man. I did six shows in the same, same night, man. Do you ever did that before? Those, I don't think those, so. the type of, those are the type of dudes that go overboard with it. Like, yeah, I ain't sit down one time, play all 48 <laughs> minutes. I ain't take a sip of water. I ain't do nothing like you doing too much. Like, hold on. Yeah, I used to walk 16 side. miles of school in the snow. <laughs> uphill, downhill, uphill, yeah, downhill. Shoes on. Backwards, moonwalk. That's, that's, that's Hey Arnold, Grandpa. Uphill, downhill, uphill, downhill in the snow. <laughs> Short man. <laughs> But, you know, I go back to it a little bit and like this break was, you know, because you guys have been running for so long, like because you guys have been doing this weekly for what was it like we started in 2018. Yeah. And obviously, started... the, obviously, the podcast has grown since then, but you guys have really been consistent to a level where not a lot of podcasts do. I think I, I, I wonder and I hope that fans understand that. This also takes a mental toll on you as well to be able to to produce a show, get ready for a show. You know, you have your own lives going on. Benjamin, like I said, you have a, a child coming again, um, and yeah. you have to get ready for a show and be ready to be entertaining as well. Yeah, man, you got you got a pregame for the show. I like the pregame like like LeBron does before I come and sit out at the table. I get like a big bowl of chalk and I put my hands in it and I do like that. Before I sit down and I start recording, you know what I mean? Like I got to like, and when after the after the show is over, I get like the, the Malcolm X autobiography, and I sit down and I read like two and a half sentences like LeBron did. You know, I'm just trying to try to be great like LeBron. <laughs> 
Trust the process. You you want reference? You want to know how you want to know how CJ pregames? <laughs> we be in pre-production. CJ would get the bottle and be like, <laughs> just like to the head. All right, I'm ready to go. <laughs> And as soon as soon as soon as the record as soon as it says record live, I, I'm just blinking like, <laughs> yeah, like there's, there's been I'm, some episodes where Graham wasn't like on there and it was just me and CJ. And I think we might have had a guest. And I was like, I was telling CJ, I was like, yo, this, how are we gonna run it? And then after I saw like the energy he was going with, I said, I'll just step out the way, bro. And I just <laughs> I'll just set you up. I'll pass, I'll feed you the ball. You, you go ahead and you go ahead and throw it up. And, and, and them episodes be my favorite when uh cause something when it's Graham's day off and Graham needs to do something. <laughs> no, because Graham needs a break before that. And then like I know Graham will be like, all right, all right, all right, y'all, all right, y'all. <laughs> hey bro, it was the first episode that he had taken off was just me and CJ. We destroyed the Twitter <laughs> like that week. It was yeah. just like, yo, he just came back. Graham was like, What did you do? I was like, mm, say my bad, dog. I was pretty good. <laughs> I thought we did all right. I know, I knew it was getting to a point where you had to get take a break when I think Graham. I don't know if the, I'll edit this, this part out if, you, if this is too much, but um, the EJ and Doga interview, and like you totally forgot about the interview happening that day. <laughs> and usually you're on top of your game, so like yeah. that was what I knew. Okay, <laughs> okay, this dude needs to take a break. <laughs> okay, so yeah, <laughs> salute to EJ and Doga. I completely forgot about that interview, <laughs> bro. Completely, like Ben. I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> like, nah, bro. Like, it, like I like before we do like an interview or have anything that we have to do, we always like I hit whoever in the chat whoever's doing the interview with me because sometimes CJ got to work, sometimes Graham got to work, and we like switch it up, which right. is like Man. it's just fine with me. But uh, I hit the chat. CJ had already like made it known when we scheduled the interviews like i'm not gonna be able to be part of it i got work or you know he had he had plans so mm-hmm. i had Graham. i was like yo you ready to go he was like what do you mean he's like we're supposed to do this thursday i was like no it's supposed to be tuesday and i was like he was like i'm at work and i was like i'll just i like i'll do the interview alone if you want and i was like you don't i was like you know don't worry about it but he you know wanted to be there man set himself up at work and not for nothing I didn't even know if we were going to do the interview that day because, like, EJ, like, if you if you listen to the interview, he kind of made mention of it that, like, last minute. Like, I always like to hit up the guest and be like, yo, we're still good for today. So I hit him that day. I was like, we're still good for today, right? And radio silence. Radio silence. Nothing from this man. And I'm like, oh, my God. I was like, are we going to do – I was like, are we going to do this in, like, maybe, like, 30 minutes before? He's like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. He's like, I'm not on here. I'm not on, like, social media like that. So oh you're going to have to forgive me. Like, I, like, EJ was, like, he was so professional when he came through and everything like that. And, like, I was like, yo, <laughs> I was prepared to do this interview by myself. But Graham just, like, he, he showed up. You know, shout out to EJ. That was probably one of my favorite interviews that we did. That was probably one of my least favorite interviews that we did. I loved it. Nah, bro. I absolutely Man loved the interview. Up. But No, no. I messed it up, though, like with my audio. You feel me? Like So for me, as an engineer and as a producer, I'm like, yeah. I ruined the interview. You feel me? And bro. then also, that's probably likely why I got fired. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You know what I'm saying I took like 20, 30 extra minutes off my lunch break and stole an office. It's like, what are you doing? What was he doing up there? Boy? It's like, hey man, I gotta get to it, dog. Like, I don't know about y'all, but like y'all pay my oh. bills from nine to five. But then after yeah. that, like, you know what I'm saying? Like what it is, that interview was like that interview was wild. Like I have on there like my name at the bottom of the screen. We usually record as like the Waco Kid because like if no one knows, like the Waco Kid is a character in the movie Blade, uh, Blazing Saddles. So uh, Ty is from Texas. He was like, "Yo, Waco." He's like, "You from Waco?" And I was like, "No, nigga." I was like, "I'm not from Waco." <laughs> no, not. I promise you. But, but it, it's it's not. Nah, like- I'm a liar. It's it's that type of thing where it's like I'm glad you guys took a break. You know, the 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 pace, the 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 content that you guys were putting out on a weekly basis, I felt like 
at some point there was going to be a breaking point. At some <clears> point there was going to be a time where like, all right, it's enough is enough. And I'm glad you guys mentally took us took took us took a stance and said, hey, let's take a step back and let's recalibrate. And when we come back, which we're aiming for August, right? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> hey, right better. around Survivor Series or something like that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, 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 hey! As, as soon as uh, as soon as Cody finishes his story, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, I'm right back. Yeah. Right. This is gonna be chapter four, <laughs> y'all. Right back at it. <laughs> and in the meantime, like Keeks is holding it down. Like Keeks is about Keeks about to hit episode fifty. Um, you got you got the the media game buzzing as it is right now. Um. And like I said, I feel like you can hold your own um, in this media game. And I think your voice is very powerful. Uh, and only in a year to be able to do that is impressive. Um, Keeks, for your future, what do you have in store for your, your brand and, and moving forward? I have some great things um, in store, um, but it will be, at, well, wrestling will be included, but it also will be outside of wrestling. I would not give too much tea, but... Yes, um, 2024 is up, and it's the. Hmm. Are we going to to see? Because we, we obviously public enemies, you guys have done interviews. Um, are we going to see you doing interviews? Is that a possibility? Um, I, I'm not. To be honest with you, I'm not really into the interviewing wrestlers. I mean, if a wrestler wants to, hey, I really want you to interview me, then hey, I, I'm all for it, but. Other than that, the guys is with it. Like, no, don't don't interview with me, public enemies. There you go. You better they right there. I'm just here to critique and that. That's my lane. I'm I'm good on the interviewing because I'm gonna ask the right questions, and the right <laughs> questions might be questions they don't want to be asked. Me and they'll yeah. So, um, if you are an AW wrestler or whatever, Public Enemies is right there because I'm pretty certain they hit you up before. So there you go. Yeah, hey Tony Khan, I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't mean it. Okay, yeah, come talk, come like, talk about Ray J with us, man. Like, bro, I apologize, I, like, Tribal Chief. Like, like, like what like, you want me to say, I, bro? Like, like bro, I deleted the tweets and everything. Damn, man. I'm <laughs> kind of damn sorry, bro. Like, bro, like I just interview people because I want to hear their stories. You feel me? Like I didn't know that people was gonna feel some type of way that we talk to people that we feel like have important things to say in this space. But I would talk to her again, sir. So <laughs> <laughs> you may need me, need me. Yes, we will. <laughs> just quick thing. Um, and I just I just thought about just now what I just think about like your influence and just how your brand has grown. Um, Graham, I think you may remember the story. Uh, remember when the the whole Austin the Austin gun situation, the old gun situation happened? When we had the blackface and and, and all that yeah. situation all that happened. Yeah. And <laughs> I texted you this because you you were the you, your podcast and your Twitter was really what made that whole thing like bigger than what it was at that time. Yeah. And so- I did a whole, we did an article and ran that because you guys had brought something to light and then that led to change and led to Tony Khan making them, I believe they took a suspension or rehab, whatever it was, but whatever action was taken care of and it yeah. was based on coming from you guys. He did like a sensitivity training. Sensitivity or something. Training, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What really? I didn't know that he did like, like bro, uh, yeah. I was just shooting from the hip that night. No, it was, yeah. it was. It was Thanksgiving week. I was just like, yo, I was happy yeah. I didn't have to work. I was like, yo, y'all see this man being goofy over here? And that was just what it was. I didn't I didn't know he went to sensitivity. But yeah. that's the thing, though. That's the thing with us, though, right? Jizzle, what do you always say? Correction is not punishment, yeah, right? it's not punishment at all. So, like, for us to call that out, <clears throat> we feel like, one, was warranted, and two, we can separate that instance from you doing some dope shit on the show. You know what I'm saying? Like when they came out to many men, like we appreciated and we saluted that because we thought it was a dope moment. Not only one for 50 cent, you know what I'm saying? You cash you a little check. You know what I'm saying? Two, it looks good for those guys because they're heels and that's, that's heat. You know what I'm saying? And it looked good. It sounded good. It was a great visual 
You know what I'm saying? But like we can separate you doing some 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 dumb stuff in your real life from you doing some dope stuff on TV and us kind of looking at it in that scope and kind of giving you the grace and the balance and the opportunity to say, okay, I've changed from that. And if you've shown that you have, then, you know what I'm saying? Salute. If you've shown that you haven't, then we write back on you. You know what I'm saying? Hey, that's my favorite part about this is making, making wrestlers explain themselves. (laughs) And, um, (laughs) That's always been one of my favorite things about this. Let me make them just make them explain themselves. And he and then he was one of the only ones that didn't run from it. He was like, Yeah, you know, I'm stupid. I was dumb, you know what I'm saying? I've learned a lot and da da but like I was younger and da da Like yeah. so he like he 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 took he took total responsibility. And that's what that was the one thing I always respected about him. Because he took that. Because was, mm-hmm, we made a lot of people explain themselves. <laughs> yo, there have been situations where we've gotten on there and we've said a couple of things and then a wrestler will comment on there and be like, well, well what about this? Like, uh, you know, yo, Eddie Curling? little nephew, like Eddie little nephew was like, Hey bro. Like, man, yo, y'all don't know. Uh, y'all know Miz. the situation of the Miz when he was in the locker room and what he was doing and everything like that. And I just like, bro, what are you talking about? Eddie's man, like nephew. double down on it, triple down on it. Uh, shout out to Austin Gunn for just like you know making the change and trying to trying to improve himself. That other guy, like, you gotta get him out of here, bro. I like he's Eddie's not, little nephew though. That's that's that Eddie's little nephew. Crazy. Eddie, Eddie little nephew. <laughs> that's, that's fire. Damn, <laughs> I got a problem with me. Come kill my uncle about it. <laughs> all right, all right. Oh, but man, I, I, like, I bring that up yeah. because it just goes to show you, like I said. Over the years of what you guys have built in, you guys have are now very, very important to the community, very, very important to this wrestling, this wrestling media in general, to where where your words do uh, make changes. Your words do do you know go throughout not just this small little circle, but go to the industry. Um, and I, I just give you guys your credit and your flowers because of just what you have built, um, not as a podcast network, and also just as yourselves and content creators. And now Keeks is long for that ride as well. And again, one of the best decisions I think you guys have made was bringing Keeks along. And now she's flourishing and she's becoming a bigger, bigger name in this, this content space as well. So um, definitely I'm, I'm just proud of you guys for what you've done. And not more, you know, and the thing with Keeks, this, this is the thing that makes me proud about Keeks because this is, the, this is something that none of us has done on this show yet. It was, she did a whole month alone, right? <laughs> I don't think you guys realize how hard it is to get up here and and speak into the camera and look at yourself and then go alone. Because I remember I did it once when we had the um, it was like a a wrestling appreciation thing. And then something was supposed to happen and it it didn't happen. And then I got a little drunk and I was like, yo, I'm going to say something, y'all. You know what it was? (laughs) It was when the Warriors won the championship. Oh, I did do that, huh? You got on and you went live with like our new like <laughs> background design, new logo and everything, premiered it with this like a drunk rant. I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, what are you what are you? Bro, we just I, I just made this. You couldn't make the black screen? No, I, I, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> I was like, I didn't know I did, I did something like that. I, I definitely did that when the Warriors won the championship. And then the wrestling appreciation thing, and I was like, and, this, and like like me, like I've been like I've been like I've been taking public speaking, like I've been on debate teams, you know what I mean? And like this was one of the hardest things to do for, for her to go out there for a whole month and knock it out. I was just like, I remember when I was just like, yo, I'm so proud of you. You did it all by yourself for a month. I might have been drunk too, might have been a couple slurs up and down. I was like, all right, I'm, uh, I'm just so proud of you. You know what I'm saying? I cry, but I will cry right now. But Reaper dry my eyes out, so I can't cry. So I'm just proud. When I did it, I had to message Stephanie Hardy. Shout out to her because she does that all the time on her show. And I'm like, girl, I don't know how you do this for a whole month. I did it for a month, and it was just uh. And she was just like, you did great. You did like you always did that before. And I took corners from her. So shout out to Stephanie Hardy. I love you. Um, I would like to ask, you know, all. Four of you guys, um, what are the goals that you have, and what do you want to do in this wrestling space moving forward? I want to go last. I want to go hey. first. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I want to quit my job. <laughs> 
and I want us to get paid for this. And I think like we we're on like we like we're on the verge. I feel like we're right at the door. And I feel like we're right at the door and we're knocking on. So I want like the like Graham said earlier, I'm saying subscribe to the Patreon. You know what I mean? We're gonna be up there, we're gonna be up there heavy, and that's the start. But like I want to now do it. Now I say, I say this all the time, and I've been saying this since the first since episode one, and Graham would test this. I said, man, we're the best podcast in the world, bro. Ain't nobody better than us. <laughs> I say that every single like every single time we do this, it, it's some version of like, man, ain't nobody, ain't nobody messing with us, dog. Like, like they need us. Like they, I said, we're the best in the world. We're the best in the world, and I want us to. I want. I want. I want them. I want to get to the point where where they're where, where in high demand and people want to talk to us, and like and like people want to fly us out and have them talk to them and do stuff like that and this expand like that. I want us to. I literally want us to take over the world. <laughs> she wants world domination. Yes. <laughs> well, what I want, um. Because I'm do, I also do things as far as Texas Indies. So um, I really don't have anything as far as like in wrestling wise because I'm kind of doing it now. But I would love to, you know, build more and more inclusion for all Black women in content, create a safer space, and just you know bring on more events and things like that. Just you know for. Because, you know, a lot of us can't do this forever. And it's always new up and comers and stuff like that. Just to show them that we broke barriers so they are free to do, you know, they don't have to face the the BS that we had to face. So that's more on, on my end. Yeah, like, I, for myself, like, I kind of echo what, what CJ said. Like, I... I'd really like to quit my job. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's I'd really, like, yo, that's, that's like a big part of it. But like another part of it would be like doing interviews with uh, wrestlers who are signed to like, you know, AEW, WWE, uh, you know, being able to get those bigger interviews because we have like a presence within like, wrestling Twitter, you know, like we have people who are signed to these companies who interact with us, who are like, yo, where we've approached them about doing an interview and they're like, yo, we got to run it through, you know, we got to, we got to run it through them. And I just, you know, I just want to be able to conduct those interviews because I know, I know we popping with NXT. Like, <laughs> I don't know nothing yeah. else. I know NXT <laughs> rock with us, man. And, and AEW. You know, I, yeah, facts. And AEW. So, you know, I just like to, you know, do some more of those and, you know, I, I want to buy another air fryer too. And I, yeah. I would yeah. just like to say publicly, uh, Cash and Dax, I understand that you guys enjoy our content. I've heard some things. Um, and I apologize <laughs> for the things that I've said. <laughs> Want to say I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> I've, I've definitely heard some things. So I, uh, but no, no, honestly, uh, for me, um, I just want us to continue to grow. I want us to enjoy, um, continue to enjoy ourselves. That's one thing that I feel like I've been lacking in, 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 in my approach to this is making sure that I'm having fun and we're all having fun. I feel like I'd be hitting a group chat like, nah, we ain't doing this. We ain't doing this. We ain't doing this. And it's like messing up these guys day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> So for me, uh, I just want us to keep going, keep keep growing. Um, damn, there was something that I wanted to say, and it just like it left me. Uh, damn, no, right there, no, right there. Uh, what 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 Jizzle and and Ben said, reflective of what they said about like, um, you know, <laughs> wanting to eventually be able to quit their jobs. I feel like in 2022 we made some amazing strides. Keeks joined the brand. All Elite mm-hmm. with Keeks was a, a secondary option and an opportunity for you to get to know the Public Enemies podcast brand. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you weren't interested in what we're talking about, there's a beautiful woman over here on, on this side or whatever, and she's got her own island, and, and she's talking everything about AEW. You, you, you can even go over there and learn something about AAA. You feel me? AAA. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? And get you some get you some lucha lessons over there with lucha each. You feel me? Not only did we do that, we we were finally able to monetize our YouTube. 
we launched a Patreon, and we started our you respect respectively, Keeks and us. Like we started doing merch. So mm-hmm. like I feel like what what you guys are saying there's 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 cornerstones in place to ensure that we are able to do that going forward and i think we now have those avenues uh for us to kind of extend our reach um in that space and in that way so i'm I'm super excited uh for the the next space and the next phase of, of growth period for this brand not only for public enemies podcast but also for all elite with keeks i think that what we offer to this space is second to none and i don't think that anybody can do it like we do it i'm gonna be completely honest with you guys i don't think that anybody can do what we do how we do y'all might have y'all own lane that's well and good but y'all can't swerve over here you know what i'm saying that's something that i feel strongly about so um yeah i i'm just super excited for for us and for me uh continue to grow with the patreon uh just different content ideas i want us to uh just kind of be able to uh put our you know put a you know stand 10 toes in a couple of different of uh, different fields or whatever you feel me when it comes to podcasting be it you you come to us for wrestling content with the podcast or you know saying there's a few other selections on the patreon or the youtube or whatever but i just want us to continue to grow and continue to build and maybe also take a couple of extra breaks here and there as well because i feel like for me at least this has been beneficial i'm excited you know, everybody needed an all season, bro. Yeah, man. Instagram. Let us see all those teeth finally. That's what I like, man. Right. <laughs> I, I, I thank you guys for coming on. I appreciate you. Keeks, you have episode 50 coming up in seven episodes. I'm looking forward to that. Um, hell of a milestone. A year in this business. Uh, June, no, May 31st. Ten In like 10 days from now that we're recording this, uh, will be your anniversary. Um, and I'm very proud of you. Well, thank you. Thank you. I am proud of myself, too, for sticking it out. I'm very excited. Um, oh, it is. A year is you do not take compliments well, do you? Huh? You don't take compliments well, do you? I really don't. No. I second time. <laughs> 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 but I feel like I'm, we kind of all the same. Because I'm a, you, you compliment me what you want. You know, I'm, I'm. What is it that you want? Like, I'm, I'm learning to accept. I'm. I'm accepting my flowers. That's. I'm learning to accept them. I'm used to just giving and not receiving because I don't really want to receive it. But when I get it, I'm just like, oh shit! What, how am I supposed to feel right now? I'm feeling all right. bubbly inside. But thank you. I really listen. Do. Listen, all elite with Keeks was a highlight for me for last year and still remains to be so um like with podcasting and like the the five years that i've been doing this with different <clears throat> platforms different shows retooling different ideas and, sh- and stuff like that this past year of producing all elite with keeks has been some of the best times that i have ever had i'm not even on the show <laughs> like you know what i'm saying like but like it, it really keeps me going and it, it really provides like a fresh perspective of for me because i don't have to talk mm. you know what i'm saying so for for me it's been an amazing journey i'm super happy super thankful for you even pitching the idea and i'm talking to you directly keeks by the way Thank i'm you. super excited and super thankful for you even pitching the idea and I'm very proud of you. This one year anniversary is something to be applauded, something that you should feel really um, excited about, something that you should feel fulfilled about because you did the work. You know what I'm saying? So it's one full year of All Elite with Keeks and I couldn't be happier. I couldn't be prouder of you. And I couldn't be more thankful that, that you are willing to allow me to be a part of this journey and that you have allowed us uh, to be a collective, a part of your family, um, in your growth in this space. And I'm just so excited for year two and everything that we do uh, beyond. You know what I'm saying? So thank you. And salute you. To everybody. I'm serious right now. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm, uh, not a, I'm hard. I, you know, I know, I know, I know you a gangster. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We've been there. Uh, yeah, <laughs> 
Yeah, man, oh, he ain't said, said nothing of this shit to us, nigga. Goddamn. <laughs> 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 well, I'm motivational speech, man. Yeah, yeah man. Right. You know, like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll add to that, and I'll say yeah. that All Elite with Keeks is an important show in this media space to have. Um, and I, you brought it up earlier, is that in this space right now, it feels like there are there are females that are covering wrestling. There are black females that are covering wrestling. I feel like there's still not enough. And there's still not enough that are given a voice in it. And I feel where, where Keeks come in in this space is she's somebody that is, like I said, is strong-minded, that is kind, and that will say what needs to be said, even though people may not like it. And I think, I, I said before, going back to it, I said Wendy Williams of it, the, the best aspect of Wendy Williams. Um what you know, you also, were... but... and not to cut you off, but also, sure. like, I don't know if anybody, uh, and if you haven't seen this, go check it out. Um, Jay Z did one interview with the Breakfast Club, and he mm. talked about how, um, good, bad, or indifferent, how you feel about Kanye West. Mm. He's typically the person that will go out with his pitchfork or go out with, with, with his mission statement and he'll be the first person to cross the line. You may not understand it at the time that he does it, but over time, when things kind of reveal themselves and expose themselves and have time to marinate, you'll kind of start to understand the reason being for and why it was that he was the first person to cross that line. And that's how I feel about Keeks. Mm -hmm. Because you may not understand it right now. You may not understand it in the moment. You might even feel a little bit of pressure because you feel like she might be getting at you or make you feel like, uh, might make you feel like you, you have to kind of, uh, make up for something or make you feel like you have to explain something or make you feel like you're even lesser than. But mm. the, the, the thing is, again, as I said at the beginning, you got to think about the approach. You got to think about the message behind it. And I feel like, again, Keeks is our yay. You may not understand it, mm. but like hey, that. check this out. Check like this out. Idea. You'll get it. Soon you'll understand. Jay-Z, Beanie Siegel. You know what I'm saying? So you'll I'll, understand. I'll I'll take that what you just said. I, I like the Kanye. I like the Kanye analogy because what I was gonna say is where Keeks is at right now and what she is doing, which is important. I feel like the next generation of women coming into this space are going yeah. to look at what Keeks is doing. Yeah. And um, Keeks, I know you have a, a daughter. Um, I think she may have been in the background a couple of times. Two, um, <laughs> two daughters. Two daughters. <laughs> One of them was in the background a couple of times. Um, <laughs> I feel like they can look at you and what you've been doing and just like other females that could definitely, or males too as well, but, but definitely females can look at what you've been doing and they can say, oh, she did that. She did it this way. I don't have to be afraid to say what I want to say in this space respectfully. And I can go out and do that too. And I could stand amongst other men and other podcasters, whatever it is. And I can still be a, a, a powerful voice in this space. And in a time right now where, where we have a little bit of that going on, I feel like in the future, we're going to get a lot more. And part of that may be due because of what you're doing right now. So um, definitely what you're doing right now is, is special. Going to episode 50 is special. And um, I'm very proud of what you've become in this space. Thank you, y'all. Y'all better me. Me cry for real, but thank y'all so much because I, I I am doing it for them. Like I get inboxes from different women in the, the space all the time. Inbox me like um, Stephanie uh, Lyric, she's up and coming. Uh, different women um, that do reach out to me and it's like I wish you know. Cause I'll use Katrina for an example because I was on her uh, Comic Con, and uh, she will inbox me and she was just like. If I had the strength to say what you just said 10 years ago, I, I think it would be different and things like that. Thank you and stuff like that. And I just like, I know I take a lot of heat and I know 
you know, that comes with it. But somebody has to say something. Somebody has to do something. And if it's going to be anybody, it'll be me. And I don't mind doing, taking the punches so I can make the, the next lady, make her up and coming smoother. Mm-hmm. I do it for them, so. And talk to her nice. Okay. Oh, yeah, they ain't got no choice. You no, you going to get either cussed out or cussed the F out. No, One or the other. I'm just nope. saying, like the last thing you need is 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 all of us hopping on there and then getting on your ass on top of that too, because we will do not we do not play about her. We I I, I for sure don't. <laughs> this is like I, I don't play about none of my people over here. Anybody say anything, I'm I'm up there. I don't nope. care. You know what I love about this, Keeks? You're getting ready to cry for a minute and the screen froze or whatever. But I'm looking at CJ. And CJ's dead about to cry himself. I know, man. So uh, that just goes to show the camaraderie you guys had and, and just the how strong you guys are together. And like I, I've said repeatedly before, I'm looking forward to see how you guys collectively go for go go from from here. And like I said, 2021, we talked about things like a Patreon, we talked about doing interviews, talked about making the, the brand bigger, and you guys have done that. So – we're in 2023 right now. I'm looking forward to see what the next year or two years is going to be like for you guys. Public Enemies video game on the way. Check this out. I mean, technically, you're already in the video game. Yo. Yeah. Technically. Yo, shout, out to, shout out to them, man. Yo, I like real. doing cool stuff like that. Anything Anything you want to say? Uh, anything before, say before we, we uh, log off here? Like You already gave your socials where to find you guys. Uh, any parting words? Graham gave us the socials, I think. Yeah, shout out to Ty, man. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yo, fuck, bro. You, you, like you, ain't, like you ain't over here making waves, too, dog. You were the first one to interview us. You're the last one. Yo, Yo, <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Yo it's definitely. I the think there's last been one in the crazy. I think there's been one in the middle, but yes, definitely. This like, yo, this, he he's got it right for the most part. Yeah, so but like, yo, definitely, definitely uh, appreciate y'all because like whenever you know, SES scoops put any puts anything out and we've tweeted about it, y'all literally put our tweet right underneath there, and I always appreciate that. It's always love, you know. And like even the last time, like I remember, like I was like, yo, man, but you had messaged us. I was like, like why did I was like, why? Why does anybody want to talk to us? Like, bro, what? What have we done that somebody's want to talk to us? But thank you, definitely appreciate you for like giving us like that little confidence boost. Like, yo, you are somebody. Yeah. I am like somebody. <laughs> Even though the only time is a spread. Man, the only oh time reason you can trust. <laughs> is trust. is not spread. All right. On that note, it's been real, guys. Thank you guys for coming on there. I definitely appreciate you. Uh, Graham, you went through about three bottles. Of that right now. <laughs> Yo, relax, <laughs> bro. I'm chilling. Don't even do that. I'm, I'm chilling, bro. But I definitely I'm appreciate chilling. your time. Give me the time. Um, I have some wedding cake. You feel me? Oh. Uh, it's a good batch of that. You know what I'm saying? So after that, I'm finna go enjoy. Uh, after this, I'm finna go enjoy that. Rather, you feel me? And yeah, I got uh, I got this new thing coming to the Patreon. You feel me, Graham? Rather, you feel me? If you ever heard of the newscaster, you feel me? I'm talking about. Hey, hey, listen, listen, listen. Patreon.com/slash Public Enemies. It is what it is. There you go. Be back, and we'll see you when we see y'all. What is the what is the to sign up and in, in the the um the entry point? How much is it? I right, check this out, man. Look, 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 and listen. Three dollars, three dollars, probably cheaper than your local chopped cheese. <laughs> you know it goes saying? back to back to chopped cheese. Listen, hey. listen. So hey, is hamburger three... helper without the helper? Like Talk, on a bun. Hey, listen, right, keep it a buck fifty. That's disrespectful. P three TV is patreon.com slash public enemies. Three dollars, five dollars, ten dollars. You do what you want to do. You feel me? You do whatever you want to do. Three dollars, five dollars, ten dollars. You tap in with the tears, you get what you get. You feel me? You either get Ben and Vin, you feel me? You get Jizzle and whoever he got coming through. You feel me? Borrowing the concept from 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 day after dynamite from all elite with keeks and situations like that. You feel me? Rotating the 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 the, the panel of co-hosts. 
Coast, you feel me? Shit like that. You feel me? Y'all can come check us out, man. It is what it is. But yeah, P3TV, patreon.com slash public enemies. Three dollars, man. Three dollars. Tap in. Go. Pull up. There you go. Thank you guys for coming on. Signing off. My name is Tyree Simon here with the Public Enemies Podcast and all the kicks. You guys have a nice day. <laughs>